Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. This is Mindy Egan. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create lots of backgrounds using the Ranger and Tim Holtz alcohol inks. And I'm also going to show you how you can add images to your backgrounds with the alcohol lift ink. Today's video, I will be using products from the February 2021 release from Gina Key Designs, including this beautiful Forever Flowers card kit. Gina's kits are always jam-packed with goodies, and this one is no different. You're receiving three stamp sets, two of which have coordinating dies. You're also receiving a Forever and Birthday Word and Shadow die. And then there are some cardstock included in the kit, including Coral Reef, Lucky Clover, Sea Glass, and Tranquil Teal. Now, before I start my backgrounds, I want to show you a few things that I'll be using today. This is a swatch chart that I created with my alcohol ink. So I took just little squares of Yupo paper and I blended on each color that I have in my collection with a little bit of blending solution. And then I used my label maker to let me know what brand and what name of that alcohol ink is. And this is so helpful. There are colors I didn't even realize I had. And this is how I store my alcohol inks. So they're all in these containers from Ranger and I have three of them, two are full, one is partial full, and they all fit in my drawers real nice. I'll also be using some isopropyl alcohol today. This is 91%, you want 91% or higher. You can also use a blending solution. Uh, the blending solution really does keep the vibrancy of the colors. This is just a little kind of squirt bottle that I have with a really fine needle point at the top there. I also have a mini mister that you do not put the blending solution in. I only use it for the isopropyl alcohol. I have a splatter brush and then my puffy tool. Now the splatter brush I didn't end up using, but that is something you can use on your backgrounds. I'll be applying my alcohol inks to Yupo paper. So there are many different kinds. I have the Ranger, Ranger Heavy Stock and I have some of the Sparkle and then also just some regular Yupo paper. I like working on the Heavy Stock because then I it's a little easier for me to heat emboss if I choose to do that. You can also use glossy cardstock, but I have never tried that. I've been really happy with the Yupo paper. So I did speed up the process of these, but I do have quite a few of them that I want to share with you. And the first thing I want to point out is that when you are working with alcohol inks, you want to make sure you're working in a well ventilated area. For me in my case, since I work in my kitchen, I did this when everybody was off at school. I have a ceiling fan on and I also have a window cracked open. You could also wear a mask if you feel more comfortable with that, just from the fumes that acquire. Uh, nothing really bad. I didn't wear a mask. I don't think it's that bad, but you know, if you are concerned with that, you could wear a mask for protection. So I am starting on my Yupo paper. This is the heavy stock and almost all of my cards. I'm starting with the isopropyl. I personally like how it moves the ink. It does kind of dim the colors down just a little bit, but you can see here in the video that they are still really vibrant. And then I'm dripping on just a variety of colors of inks. Unfortunately, I did not write them down. Uh, I just kind of was grabbing and looking at my swatch chart. And then once I add on those drips of alcohol, I come in uh, a little bit with the isopropyl to move it around a little bit more. And then using my puffer tool and just kind of move that ink around. Then I pick it up with a set of tweezers and I set it off on a paper towel to dry. That ink is still moving when you pick it up to dry. So just give it a little bit of time to dry and settle in and they look just absolutely gorgeous. Now, if at any time you're not happy with how a background is looking, you can take either the blending solution or that isopropyl alcohol and just put a bunch back down onto your Yupo paper. And it, I don't want to say erases it, there'll still be some staining, but you can kind of start over if you're not liking how something looks. And I did that a few times. Now here I'm going to start getting into some uh, kind of crazy colors, I call it. I have some browns here and greens. I know I did use uh, dandelion a lot and pool, uh, stream and mermaid. Those are some of the blues. I have pebble and don't remember the green that I used there, but this is lime green. I know limeade I used quite a bit. And then a magical color that I discovered was black. Uh, I, I love contrast. I love dark, moody kind of alcohol ink backgrounds. 
And I watched a live from Tim where he used black and I was blown away how gorgeous the backgrounds come out. Now on these black backgrounds, I'm also taking the Gilded Alloy ink. I'm adding just a little drop onto my background, adding a little bit of the blending solution and then using my puffer tool to kind of move that around. Once I saw how absolutely gorgeous that was, I started bringing in other colors. So this was Fiesta and Dandelion and the black alcohol ink and moving that around. And it's just, it's so pretty. I could watch these types of videos for hours. And then adding that gilded on top, there's also sterling and a few other colors of um, that alloy ink that you could use, but I just have the sterling and the gold. So I'm going to be having these all off on the side to dry and I will briefly sh briefly show you how I put some of the cards together and the products that I used. All of my products will be also listed down below in the video description of this video and also on my blog along with a ton of pictures with these cards. And I also wanted to let you know too, if you're not already a subscriber of my channel and you enjoy my videos, I would love to have you be a subscriber and then just be sure to click the notification bell so you're notified of when any new videos are posted from me. So after everything is completely dry, which usually doesn't take too long unless you have some buildup in areas of the alcohol ink, I'm going to show you quickly just all the backgrounds I created. Some of them I used today, some of them I did not. I'll put some off on the side if I need a card in a pinch. I will always have these backgrounds. You can also die cut from Yupo paper. So you can always die cut sentiments or shapes, things like that. You can die cut from this paper too. And those make just really interesting elements for your cards. So you can see I, I tried out a lot of different colors. Just experiment and have fun. These are those kind of moody backgrounds. I posted these on my Instagram and everybody just really loved these dramatic backgrounds. So it was nice to be able to put that in the video to show you how I created those. Now I do use quite a few of these stamp sets from the Forever Flowers card kit and I'll show you a couple other ones that I'm using as well for this. So this is the Lace Flowers stamp set. I really loved that large image in the bottom corner. I thought that would work great for the lift technique. This is the Forever Flowers. I didn't get a chance to use the images, but I am going to use the sentiments. And this is the Peaceful Violets. I didn't get a chance to use this one, but I think it would be great for the lift technique. And then here is the Flowers for You, which I used quite a bit. Now to do the alcohol lift technique, I am using the alcohol lift ink pad, which is a felt pad just like any other pad but it's got a special formulation in it to lift alcohol ink. Now before I start I am prepping my stamped images because I haven't used it before so I just rubbed my hand over it to remove any residue left over from the manufacturing company and I have one of my backgrounds in here. Now I am using also the misty corner in case I kind of have an overhang of the stamp set. I inked that image up and I'm stamping it down onto my alcohol ink background. I like using the Misty tool because most cases in this, I am going to stamp this twice. So after I push down really well, you can already see some of that alcohol ink was lifted up. Then you take a paper towel and just dab off any excess ink that might still be on there. And then you can come in and rub over that. And that's going to really make that pop off of the background. Now there are some areas that I didn't quite get a good enough impression with. So I did clean off my stamp because now remember we stamped it so it picked up alcohol ink. So I'm going to clean off my stamp with an archival cleaner and then I'm going to ink it up again with that lift ink and stamp down again. And you can see how that really brought that image even more uh, to the forefront of this card. And then once again, just dabbing up any excess ink and then rubbing over that with my paper towel to really pop, make that pop some more. So this is one of the backgrounds that has that alloy ink on it. And that one does take a little bit of work. It picks up the alcohol ink, but not so much that alloy ink. You're also going to notice that my stamp set is stained. That is okay. It still stamps. It still works. It's just a little tinted from the alcohol ink. So not a big deal. Stamped that down, once again, dabbing up any of that excess ink with a paper towel and then rubbing over that. So you can see it did really pick up that alcohol ink, but not so much the gilded. And that's okay because this is going pretty artsy. I mean, the background itself is really moody and a lot going on. 
and then adding in this gorgeous lace flowers image, I'm totally okay with some of that not picking up. And then like I said before, I am cleaning my stamp in between and I'm using an archival stamp cleaner to do that, which is what Tim recommended when I watch his lives. Now I'll move on to using the Flowers For You stamp set. I love flowers like this that you can either color, you can ink blend on, um, and you can use them on your alcohol ink background. So if you're not comfortable with coloring, this is another great option. You can create backgrounds with it or a subtle background with it. So just one of my favorite types of flowers is these open petal images like this. Now I have here one of my backgrounds. I have some purple and blues in the background, stamping that down. And this, I think this is just one of my favorites. This petal look is so pretty. And you can see in the darker areas where uh, my two alcohol ink colors had kind of mixed there was a little bit more alcohol ink on there so it's going to take a couple times for me to stamp this and really get those lines to show through but it still comes through really well and i'm just going to stamp that and stamp that down again and then dab off any of that excess ink and rub it through now this next background came out really pretty it is just a really smooth transition of colors I have. I think that's dandelion and sorry, I don't remember the other color that I had used. It's one of the great things about that swatch chart is I can just kind of grab things and you never know what's going to happen. Now this one I used the Easter Blessings, which is those dandelions, and I thought they deserved kind of a bright background. So I brought in my rainbow background that I had created. It's pretty busy, but I think it's really pretty and colorful and just kind of fit that image really well. Now, I already knew that I was going to be die cutting a lot of the forever and the birthday word dies out of the kit. So I am taking a variety of sentiments that are going to match that. These are some little skinny sentiments off of forever flowers and the flowers for you stamp set, which is a separate stamp set from the kit. But I really liked the skinny sentiments. So any skinny sentiment you have that would work with the word dies is good. I lined them all up onto some black cardstock prepped this with an anti-static powder tool, and then once again, just rubbing my finger over those uh, stamps to kind of condition them. And then I'm gonna stamp it in the embossing ink. Then I will bring in some white embossing powder and just sprinkle that over it. Now I did also stamp another set on black cardstock with silver embossing powder. So kind of nice when you're able to get a bunch of them done like this. You can change up the colors very easily. Now you may or may not notice I suddenly have a band-aid on my thumb and that is because I had a slight accident with my paper trimmer. I was originally going to trim all of these sentiments out with my paper trimmer and I let, I'll leave out the gory details but I needed a band-aid. Let's just say that. So if you have any of the master layouts dies, I highly recommend using them. They fit a lot of these sentiments really well. I'm just holding them in place with some easy C tape and running them through my die cut machine. This particular set is the Master Layouts 3 die set. Now I won't show all of the cards and how I completed them, but I will show you a few of them. This one I just trimmed down to fit onto a white card base, and I layered at the back of that panel with more cardstock cut to the same size just to add dimension. And then I have a simple love and hugs sentiment that I added to the middle with some black foam squares and finishing it off with clear dew drops that I'm adding with the connect glue and an embellishment tool. So some of these you wouldn't even need a word die, just a simple sentiment in the center works great. Now for this one, I trimmed off some of the side of it. So I have more of a margin on the uh, left and right side and I'm just adding that straight down with a tape runner. And here I have a forever die cut from holographic cardstock. I'm adding just little dots of glue and then dabbing it so it doesn't kind of ooze out of the side. And then I'm adding it to the shadow die that I have die cut from white cardstock. Now crazy me must have been the thumb situation. I trimmed down little foam squares and added it to the back. But an easier way to do this would be to die cut the shadow die like three times and attach them together and add dimension. Then you don't have to worry about itty bitty foam squares going behind all of those swirly letters. And then I just took a best friend's sentiment. I trimmed off the flags and just adding that right to the top so it says best friends forever and finishing it off with some of the angel aura jewels which are just some of my favorites from Gina. 
So here's a close look at that background and the jewels on there just really adds kind of a nice sparkle to it. And we have that light stamped image in the back. Now this last one that I'll show you how I completed on screen is using the East Duke Blessings stamp set. I trimmed it down so it's filling up the bottom portion of my card front, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I have birthday die cut from holographic cardstock. I use that to line up this happy belated sentiment. And let's face it, I never send birthday cards on time. So this is really great for me. And then just once again, I added little dabs of connect glue to the back and attach that down right under that happy birthday or happy belated birthday. Now for my moody backgrounds that I had done with the black alcohol ink, I, I just could not bring myself to cut those panels at all. So I left them as is creating card fronts from them, landscape and portrait. And I added this beautiful sentiment that says you are, and then there's such a good friend or you are amazing. That comes from the flowers for you stamp set. So just by simply adding a, a nice beautiful sentiment can really complete these cards. Here's another card that I created that was using the lace flowers with the alcohol lifting. And I die cut one of my panels from the heart out of one of the master layouts die set. This is another one that was really fast to put together. I left the panel as is just trimmed it down to four by five and a quarter and added that forever word die with the shadow die in vellum. So here's a look at all of the cards that I completed today lots of ideas for you. And here's a look at the moody background one. So I, I did do a lot. I usually don't do such in-depth cards or a lot of cards in my videos, but when it comes to alcohol inks, it's really hard to stop. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed today's video and taking a look at alcohol ink backgrounds and the alcohol lift ink. And if you did enjoy it, I would really appreciate a thumbs up that helps tell YouTube to share it with other viewers that may be interested in this technique. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you again soon.